are part of a culture. Um, you ever met somebody that broke up with a boyfriend and girlfriend and they were miserable? And you were like, my God, I wish they would have never broken up. They were better together. You know, the guy, he grows his beard out to his knees, and the girl, she's just miserable eating ice cream all day long in her apartment by herself. And you're just like, man, they were better together. They should have just stayed together. Bishop, I need to tell you this. I honor you today. I love you. I love my bishop, my dad. Pastor Henry, Pastor Sharon, we love you. Pastor, Pastor Lopez, we love you. All the leaders here at West Coast. But I need to give you my two weeks notice. I think the Holy Spirit has spoken to me to move to the North Pole and become Santa Claus. <laughs> Yesterday, I, I downloaded an app on my phone. It was, the bad, it was a bad decision. And I downloaded an app on my phone. I wanted to see what I would look like when I was 70 years old. And all I saw in the screen was Santa Claus. And, uh, and just, I just like, oh, my gosh. I just, uh, and I said, Lord, are you saying something to me? And, uh, and then today I'm at the store, and, and I'm walking down the aisle, and I hear, hey, ho. I was about to get in a fight. I heard, hey, ho. And I go, huh? And I turn around, and a little boy's pointing at me, and his grandma says, he thinks you're Santa. <laughs> so I think the Lord may be talking to me. That's not true. He's not. He's not. You know, we've been talking about the kingdom culture, and, um, and I've enjoyed this series. I've enjoyed these weeks we've talked about this because we need, to, in, in, we need to, to identify who we are as a family. We are a family. There are certain traits. If, if the Filky guys go into a restaurant, you can automatically tell that we're family. And believe it or not, people can tell that you're a part of the West Coast family. You are better, we are better together. Look at your neighbor and say, we are better together. Say it again. Say, we are better together. We, we do things better when we do it together. We are, we are better emotionally, meaning that I love, I love Brother Sisna, and I love Brother Sisna's hugs. I walk in, there have been Sundays where I was having a hard time, and I walked in, and he lit up my life with that hug. There are times when I'm having a hard time or I'm going through something, and somebody will walk in, and they'll give me a word, or they'll encourage me. And it reminds me every time I have a moment like that where somebody's encouraging me, where somebody is strengthening me, I, it makes me realize that I'm better at West Coast. I'm better when I'm here. I'm better when I'm involved. We are better together. And, you know, the world is so selfish, and the world we live in is so selfish. I was watching YouTube yesterday. I watch it a lot, too much probably. And uh, I watched YouTube yesterday, and they were talking about how back like five, six, seven years ago, all the different YouTube artists would do work together. And he said over the years they have gotten so selfish they will no longer do videos together because they don't want the input or they don't want the help of anybody else. The world is a dog-eat-dog -dog place. Amen. It's a place that's full of division. It's a place that is full of strife. It's a place that is difficult. People are out for number one. But I thank God that at West Coast, we are one big family. And we are better together. Look at everyone and say, we're better together. Come on, say it again. Say, better together. Let's get in our word, my favorite part of the whole night. Let's get in our word. Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, we're going to read a passage of scripture and the Apostle Paul is speaking to the new church, the church that is not even a hundred years old. He is speaking to the new body, new signs and, uh, signs and wonders are happening in the new church. These amazing groups of people are forming all over the world. And people are being delivered, and people are being healed, and people are being set free. And there is a unity in the Christian faith like no other faith in the world. And the Apostle Paul is talking to the new church, and this is what he says to them. He writes a letter to the Romans. He says, For the grace has been given to me to say to everyone among you, not to think of himself too highly than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment. 
as God has allotted to each, each of us a measure of faith. For just as we have many members in one body, and all members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individual members one another. So we can't say to, we can't say to one person who is hugging somebody, well, you're good at that, but my position is higher because I'm in the Levites. Or you can't say, well, uh, they're living a life that I disagree with, so I'm going to separate myself from them because I can't associate with that kind of person in this church. No, there are many parts to this body. There are many functions in this body. This is why gossip is such a dangerous thing, Pastor Henry. Because you can't say to your hand, I don't need you. You can't say to your foot, I don't need you. You can't say to your knee, I don't need you. Because when your body is together, it works better when it's together. It's better when it's together. And then he goes on and he says, Since we have many gifts that differ according to the grace that's been given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. Meaning that because I may not be good at one thing that you may be good at, you exercise that gift within this body. I have met people that could not cook boiled water well. They're horrible at cooking. And you ask them to cook something and it turns into colors it should not be. But that same person may not be good at cooking, but that same person is amazing at greeting. Or that same person can make that bathroom sparkle. Or that same person can teach in the children's ministry. All of us have different giftings. All of us have different abilities, but we are one body and we are better together. Amen? And so let's go on. And, and it said, if you prophesy, prophesy, to mean encourage one another, according to, the, to your proportion of faith, if service in serving or in teaching, teach. If he is teaching, you know what's crazy about this is, is I often notice that people that get, that get saved, after a certain amount of years, they forget about what it was like to be a new believer. And what happens is there are these young ones in the faith, almost like your finger has been cut off and it's growing back. And those young ones in the faith need to be taught and need to be guided. That is the culture we live in. That's why you notice when us pastors see you and you're new, we so quickly will go to you and say, hey, listen, let's hang out. Let's have coffee. Come talk to me. Because we're saying, look, we recognize that you're a part of this family. We recognize that if you join and get involved, we'll get better and better and better. The more diversity, the more different uh, ways of thinking, the more cultures we have in our church, the way that everybody is different makes us stronger and makes us better, right? And so if you teach, okay, and, and if you give, which is a gift, give liberally. He who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. West Coast is not a cookie cutter kind of place. I love West Coast. I love the diversity we have, which you don't know and you may not know, but I've been to churches all over the world, Bishop, and there is not another church in the world like this place. So many different kinds of people from so many different kinds of backgrounds, but we have one love together. And when we put our mind to something, if it's the front of the church and we say we've got to do something about the front, we get together and we make it happen. If we talk about the fence, we get together and we make it happen. If we talk about buying new chairs, we make it happen. If we talk about the children's ministry, we make it happen. If we talk about waving signs outside, we make it happen. We are better together. We're better together. So we're not a cookie cutter place. So I was, I was uh, uh, detained in my home. I, I wasn't arrested, but I, I was going through some physical stuff in my home. For two weeks, I watched a lot of television. I cannot tell you how much TV I watched. And I was watching this YouTube special about they were trying to make this suit of armor, Bishop, and they were trying to figure out how these suits, they started noticing that 
the suits of armor had dings in them that proved that there were knights around when they were when they were beginning to shoot bullets at people when they had invented guns. So they were trying to replicate. Uh, they were trying to replicate building a suit of armor and especially the breastplate, especially the part that covered the chest. And so they were trying to replicate it, and they just kept thinking in the way that we think in 2019. They kept saying, well, we're going to make a mold, and we will pour the molten metal into the mold. We'll just pour all the metal into the mold, and then that will make it strong enough to withstand a bullet. And over and over and over again, they would make a mold, and then they would shoot it. They would, they would put metal in there, and then when it was done cooling, they would shoot it with a bullet, and it could not withstand the, the attack. It could not withstand the bullet. It would go through the armor, which meant that any knight that would have worn that would have died. So we haven't been able to make suits of armor for several hundred years. The techniques have been lost. And so this, this blacksmith began to, begin to, that would be the point with the video if you've got it, Jail. The blacksmith began to work with the metal and he realized that he could no longer, he could no longer just, just make a mold. He took a piece of metal, then he put another 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 piece of metal, and he hammered it out, he folded it over, and he put another piece of metal, and another piece of metal, because he learned that the steel was better together. That, it, that we cannot believe that we can, we can withstand the attacks of the enemy if we separate from each other. That we are better together. And over and over again, he folded it and he added and he folded it and he added. And at the end of the show, the end of the show, they shot a bullet right at the heart and it could not penetrate the armor. It could not penetrate the armor. Here's a side note. One of the things they learned was that the melding of the metal was not fast. It was not quick. It took time. Sometimes we get impatient and we start thinking to ourselves, I don't know where I fit. You say to yourself, I don't know anybody in the church that has the background that I have. You say to yourself, I, I don't know anybody that talks like me or has the accent like me or thinks like me. Let me say something to you. Because you're here, we're better. Because you're a part, we are better. Because you're a part, we are growing. Because you're a part, everything is, is, is good because you're a part. We are better together. We can't do what you can do. You can see people in the hallway, and you know, as pastors, we're running. We have so many different things that we're doing, and sometimes we, we can accidentally miss people. And, and, but you don't have to miss people. You can say to yourself, I'm going to give them the same love that Pastor Willie gave me when I first walked in. And you can talk to them, and you can teach them, and you can help them along. You can ask them out to lunch because you can express through what you do. Listen, we need you here. We're better when you're here. You've got things that I don't got. You've got talents that I don't got. You've got a way of thinking that I don't got. We are better together. We're not a cookie cutter place here. We, we, we understand that people come from different places and, and do different things. And, and maybe you're coming from a lifestyle. I'm not concerned about what lifestyle you're in right now. I'm just concerned that you become a part of our family and allow God use you to minister to somebody else. I'm more concerned with God, the, the enemy telling you that God can't use you because something you're working through. That's a lie from the enemy. We need you here. We need the gifting of God inside of you. We need the anointing of God inside of you. We need those talents that God has given you. We need that way of thinking and that way of talking. We need that in our body. We are better together. There are people that I can't talk to. Don, I just... I just don't click. But you may be able to click with them. There are sometimes I get into the, the conversation with someone on the phone and I don't know what to say. I just run out of things to say and I don't know how to communicate. But you know what? 
you might be able to communicate with them. I am pretty good with kids. I'm not the best, but I know people that are a lot better than me. So why don't I write the curriculum for the church for baptism class? And why don't you help me teach the Sunday school class? You're good at that, and I'm good at this. And if we all put the best we have in, you know what happens? Everything grows. And you know why? Because we're better together. People often can't withstand the attacks of the enemy because they disconnect for various reasons. Don't disconnect. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. Don't, don't be intimidated. Don't feel like people hate you or, 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 or that you're not getting along with people. Come to us so that we can connect you, fold you over like that blacksmith did, fold you over and cover you with somebody else and make sure that you're still attached to us. Because we're so much better when you're here. And that goes for everybody in the room. Look at your neighbor and say, you're, we're so much better when you're here. We are better together. We are stronger together. We are more anointed together. We can reach more family together. We can bring more unsaved people in together. We can minister to more kids together. We can have a better worship team together. We can pray over more people together. We can hug more necks together. There are so many things we can do together, but we're better together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for every person in this room, and I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you that, Lord, the moment that we gave our life to you, especially those that have given our lives to you in this room, in this very, at this very altar space. You've anointed us to be a part of West Coast. We don't got to find somewhere else to go. You've anointed us to be here. Father, I thank you that you meld us one by one, person by person, layer by layer, attribute by attribute. You bring us together because we are better together. God, none of us are on our own. None of us are by ourselves. None of us are, are, are out somewhere and, and, and nobody loves us. And God, we love each other. We are so much better together. So Father, I just thank you for your word. And Lord, I also thank you to give us a heart to find new layers of metal to bring into West Coast. God, to find new people that are hurting, to find new people that, are in deli- that need to be delivered, find new people Lord, that are in various lifestyles that we know is harming them, that we know is hurting them. Help us find those people in the coffee shop. Help us find those people in the store. Help us invite our friends and our family. Lord, because the more layers we add, the stronger and better we become. We are better together. Father, I thank you for your word. We thank you for everything you've said to us. Sing it deep in our heart tonight. God, we thank you for it and we praise you for it.